only a couple of hours ago, we became aware of um, a conversation with Francis Collins, who's the head of the NIH, um, on Lex Friedman's podcast. And we've both listened, but we really have had very little time to to think carefully through the various ways to respond. I have pages of notes that I am not going to to riff on here, um, but for a couple of points, and you wanted to just say something about one of the points. Yes, I want to uh, to do that. I, I should say I have not gotten one hundred percent through it yet. I'm okay. Uh, probably an hour into it. Yeah, I have. Um, I literally was not able to listen to the last two minutes yet, but I, I feel like I got the gist. <laughs> um, and lots, lots, and lots. Maybe of notes. the punchline is in the last two minutes. I, yeah, maybe so. Um, so Francis Collins is the. He's, he's been for twelve years the head of the NIH. Spanned. Um, three different presidencies. Um, he is, as the head of the NIH, of course, the employer of the boss of the heads of all of the, the sub-agencies of the NIH, including the NIAID, uh, which is the agency that, that Fauci leads. Uh, and you know, without going into all of the details on the various claims in the podcast, this may not seem as strong. But one of the things that Colin says in this podcast is that in addition to SARS-CoV-2, quote, we have another epidemic in this country. It's the loss of the anchor of truth. And he, of course, is suggesting that it is uh, people who are questioning the pronouncements that are coming out of organizations like uh, the NIAID and the CDC and the WHO, who are losing touch with the quote unquote anchor of truth. Uh, but given how many, how many untruths and elisions and um, sleights of hand uh, that he engages in, in this, in this conversation, it would seem to me that he is um, exactly the person who is contributing to the epidemic to which he is referring. Yeah, it's perfectly ironic. It is. It is perfectly. I, I'm just. I'm going to try to stay cool here. <laughs> I, the other thing that I wanted to specifically mention, since we don't have, um, I'm, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> I'm not. I'm. I, I take back I, what I, I said. No, about no, irony. no. This is not. This is not on you. I'm <clears> just. Uh, we decided that uh, I should not be let completely off leash today because. Um, I would. I don't think it might be fun to watch, and I'd probably be um, some riveting and maybe a little cathartic for me. But I don't think it would necessarily be the best use of our platform. Near the end of the conversation, uh, Collins uses a metaphor of being a midwife in this process, and I actually did not have time to go back and um, remind myself of whether or not he's talking about being a midwife in the process of of COVID, of the COVID response, or um, of the entire. Um, his entire time at NIH, but regardless, really, there are enough other things that he's done at NIH that um, that no matter which one of those two things he's referring to, this um, at the point that he called himself a midwife, I think I almost punched a tree. I was out walking while uh, while listening, and um, he's actually, I think, a better metaphor than midwife uh, would be that he's the, he's the doctor who comes in as a, a woman is. Um, Getting close to being able to give birth um, perfectly normally, and it, you know it's hard and it's dangerous. And uh, the fact that we're bipedal makes it uh, makes it more dangerous and more difficult. And the fact that we've got giant brains, all of this is true. And um, uh, medical intervention has saved babies' lives and women's lives, but um, most births don't require it. And he's actually rather than like a midwife. Um, who is simply facilitating what was already going to happen and helping it along. He's more like the doctor who forces full medicalization of birth. He drugs the mom and he cuts her open and he rips the baby out. And uh, then he drags the baby away from the mom. Maybe doesn't let baby near the mom um, for a little while. And then, and then when the baby uh, doesn't attach at the breast or is otherwise uh, a little impaired for having had this incredibly traumatic birth experience, he blames the mother. That's what he's like, not a midwife. He's like that doctor. And this is um, just how how dare he call himself a midwife, really? Well, I actually kind of want to steel man his position. Oh, here. go. Yeah, go for it. Do <laughs> it. No, my thought is that what we have is a completely disastrous public health policy in response to this pandemic has been from the beginning. And Collins has been in a position to do something right about it, which he has failed to do he again and again. Yep. Um, it is not as much... Um, his catastrophe as it is directly 
Anthony Fauci's, Collins is Fauci's boss. And so I would say that um, Fauci is more like the mother of this crisis. And uh, Collins, um, it's a midwife crisis. Let's put it that way. Midwife crisis. I don't get it. Oh, no. <laughs> My joke has fallen flat. Midwife crisis? Oh. Oh, see? All right. Yeah, yeah I don't like it, though. No, I, I get it now, but I don't like it. I mean, A, I'm... I, I came in, in the door. Mode. I was like, yeah. oh, I'm full of adrenaline right now. But um, but I also... I guess I don't... Um, you know, m- midwives have been vilified. You know, not not so recently. Like, you know, by the time we were young adults, I think midwives were coming back into fashion. It was sort of understood that the medical, it was beginning to be understood that the medicalization of birth had been way overdone and that midwives having been, you know, pushed out in favor of high intervention, um, high credential doctors was, uh, was maybe not the right move. Um, but I guess I don't want to, um, I, I, neither of them. Not, neither of them have been midwife like. Right, right. No, I, 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 agree. I mean, but this is, you know, this is, this is, this is why some people don't like puns, <laughs> right? It was like, oh, okay, I, I get what you were Wait. trying to do, but no, no. Some people don't like puns. I know you. Nobody know that. likes puns unless you're making them, right? Yeah, Dick Alexander used to say that the uh, the person who was the butt of the the pun was the person listening to it. Um, <laughs> That's good. Yeah. yeah. No, that's probably he, right. He's a that's very insightful right. guy. Um, yeah. But anyway, yeah. So, all right. This this midwife thing is a way that people distance themselves from responsibility. You know, it was happening anyway. And, and it, it's sort of falsely humble. But in this case, actually, he deserves responsibility and responsibility for what is, in effect, an upside down response where we've missed virtually every opportunity we had to do something useful and embraced all sorts of things that don't make any sense. Yeah. And... Uh, um, anyway, it was very disturbing. I mean, he does appear to be guileless, and yet almost everything he says in at least the first hour of this podcast strikes me as distorted, warped, misleading. It was it was an, a remarkable display. There's a lot of very precise language uh, that is delivered as if it just occurred. Yeah, it's a very precise language is a, is a good way of, of putting it. Um, and a, a fair amount of CFA, I noticed throughout. What's that? Uh, cover Fauci's ass. Um, mm. He did mm-hmm. a lot of, and he did it about as well as a transparent miniskirt. You could see right through him. Oh, no. Yeah, I know. Oh, no. <laughs> it okay, I would like the audience to recognize that that image that is now in all of our heads <laughs> oh. was not put there by me. I didn't do it. Didn't do it. Wouldn't have done it. I wouldn't have done it. You know, to the you. funny thing is, I said it without having the image in my head, and now you have forced me to see I that. Just image, don't think that I, this is my. You know, I, <laughs> I'm I'm neither midwife nor dime. I'm just. I'm, I don't feel like. Maybe we should not belabor the point. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Well done. Yeah, no, you have no responsibility. You're like the oh the, the '60s husband in the waiting room. <laughs> Handing out cigars to rando strangers. To rando strangers. Yeah, look what I'm doing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> exactly. I should say. Oh, God. Putative father in the waiting. <sighs> did you want? Did, were, you, were you going somewhere else? Here? No, no. Really? I, I think I was. I think I was there. You didn't want to. I thought you maybe wanted to say something about that. You had said. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh, uh, you oh. Uh, you were done with your point. All right. So we could yeah. move on to that uh, that point. So one of the things that he does here. Um, is he attempts to cover Fauci on this issue of gain of function, where, of course, Fauci lied directly to Congress with cameras running. Uh, some of us saw it right away. You can check my tweet from uh, from that moment, and which point I said this is just a flat-out lie. No, but Brett... I mean, my eyeglasses are gain of function. So, <laughs> yeah. Like what? Every day I have a gain of function because I'm wearing these eyeglasses. <laughs> Otherwise, I would not be seeing you as clearly. I'm happy for that gain of function. So, Collins does this amazing thing here, which mm-hmm. is he basically argues that gain of function is effectively meaningless because virtually everything that we do that works is a gain of function. So, that's not what we science well, types true. mean by gain of function. We mean something very specific and so narrow that you almost couldn't possibly meet the definition. And then he tells us more or less where the bodies are buried, literally in this case. Um, 
what he says is effectively, look, gain of function in the regulated sense only applies to human pathogens. And because we're talking about bat viruses, you know, yeah. we're not talking about gain of function in the gain of function sense, although we may mm -hmm. be talking about a gain of a function. No, and it's very highly regulated. I mean, there's only been three uh, influenza viruses in the last several years that have been authorized to, and therefore. Right. And this is uh, nonsense. And really, its purpose is to lead you to believe that there's some very technical discussion that you are not qualified to understand. And therefore, Fauci has been simply insisting on a technical definition that you couldn't possibly care about. And, uh, you know, Rand Paul has been going after him based on common parlance. And it's like all some kind of scientific misunderstanding. It does depend on what the definition of is is. It, 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 it sure is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it's, I mean, it's it's similar levels of definitional games, games, yes, games, uh, in which you know that reference to um, Clinton being impeached in 1996, whatever it was, um, you know, the the only thing at stake was actually his presidency, which to him was obviously incredibly important, but um, people weren't going to die over it. Um, but in this case, these these definitional games are um, of far greater impact, tremendous impact, and yes. they are a matter of responsibility. So. Uh, he also does a lot of stuff. You know, he makes the standard play. He says um, that uh, although a lab leak is possible, it's very unlikely based on exactly zero evidence, of course. Sure. Um, and uh, actually, uh, Lex asks him if um, uh, if this is a matter of science, if we will ever, if there's any way that we will actually ever know about the origin and Colin says, well, yes, it's quite possible we will know. And oh, Lex oh. asks him how. And he says, well, if we find the intermediate. So basically the point is he has set up a circumstance in which only one side of the equation is testable. If it turns out to be a, a natural origin, then we can prove it. And there's nothing that can prove the other direction. And so, and, and the whole thing is just nonsense because we've, we can see in the uh, the grant application that was recently revealed by EcoHealth Alliance, um, where they wanted to enhance pathogens, the entire argument for the research program involves enhancing pathogens so we can understand how they work before the pandemic strikes us from nature. So the, the, the whole thing is nonsense. He's just creating a false story. And through the entire thing, he strikes this um, this. Uh, stance in which he is the beleaguered scientist forced to engage an ignorant public. And yes, that's his cross to bear and he will do so willingly so long as in the end the public comes around to the pronouncements of the public health authorities who have of course been right from the beginning when in fact they've been wrong again and again and again and again and they've been revealed to be hiding things again and again who most especially Fauci again and again and again and so why is anybody listening to this guy why is anybody listening to this guy? He is lying into a camera in order to mislead you back into a story that has fallen apart around him. Yeah. And uh, there are a lot of those examples in this conversation, um, which we're not going to pursue here. Right? Right. We will allow our eyes to bulge privately. Uh, yeah. um, good for now? Yep. <laughs> All right. Uh, I did actually want to segue to the next thing we were going to talk about uh, with uh, one additional thing uh, that, that he said, that Collins, the head of the NIH, said in this conversation. So how do we uh, solve this thing? How do we get out of this pandemic? What's like if you had a, like a wand or something or uh, you, you could really implement policies, what's the full cocktail of solutions here? Uh, it's a full cocktail. It's not just one thing. In our own country here in the U.S., it would be getting those 64 million reluctant people uh, to actually go ahead and get vaccinated. There's 64 million people who didn't get vaccinated? Adults, yes. Not even counting the kids. Wow. 64 million. Wow. Isn't that astounding? Uh, get the kids vaccinated. Hopefully their parents will see that as a good thing, too. Uh, get those of us who are due for boosters boosted because that's going to reduce our likelihood of having breakthrough infections and keep spreading it. Uh, convince people that until we're really done with this, and we're not now, uh, that social distancing and mask wearing indoors are still critical uh, to cut down the number of new infections.
But the full extent of his answer is vaccinate everyone, including children, socially distance, wear masks. That is it. That is the full extent of the answer that he provides for how we can stop this pandemic. He must know that's not true. He must know. He has been the head of the National Institutes of Health for 12 years, okay? How else can we actually control this pandemic? How can individuals actually take control of their own health besides getting vaccinated and wearing masks and socially distancing, which are the three things, and, and making sure that their children get vaccinated if they have young children. These are the only things that he says individuals can do in order to help control this pandemic. No, he is wrong and he knows he is wrong. Eat real food, move your body, supplement with vitamin D, if any of the following things are true for you, if it is winter where you live, if you live at high latitudes, if you are obese, if your skin is dark, if you are sick in any way, but especially with any of the comorbidities for COVID. There are a tremendous number of things that people can do to actually take control of their own health. And by doing so, the outcomes for COVID the chances that you will get it and the chances that you will get really sick from it go down dressed dramatically, dramatically. Another thing that he says in this conversation, which is not true, that, um, that, your, that your health doesn't have an effect on, on COVID outcome. It's, 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 a, it's dead wrong and he knows it. 